Hi everyone, you're watching Make a Model of Your Home, made for American Institute of Architects. This video is a companion piece for a live virtual course intended for children ages 10 through 12, and it will require some adult supervision as we use some more advanced tools. My name's Olivia Morgan. I build models for a living and own my own DC local model building business called Model Space. I'll walk you through all the steps we take in our own shop to build models. In this picture, you can see me holding a model of a slightly more advanced project I built for a LinkedIn learning course. Parents, if you'd like to learn how to build a model like this, check out the link in the description below. In this course, we'll cover how to make a scale model of this home or any other building in your own neighborhood using a few simple steps and common household tools. I'll go over some of these steps a little quickly, so feel free to pause and rewind at any part to catch up. If you're unable to attend this course live, you can still follow along with this tutorial at home. I have all the printable content you need in the video description. Before we get started with the building, let's talk about what we learned in last week's lesson. Last week, we covered the big model building steps, which are getting your building information, making fabrication plans from that building information, and then using those fabrication plans to build your model. For this course, I took photos of an apartment I wanted to build as part of my building information. So from that, I got a few images of the building faces. An architect would call these facades or elevations, so you might hear me refer to these images as facades or elevations throughout this lesson. Once I got my pictures, I started to take measurements of my apartment building. We talked about how we can use scale to convert these real-life dimensions that I gathered down into a model scale. So with those measurements, I could now come up with a model scale, one foot equals one quarter. What this means is we're going to represent every real-world foot with only a quarter inch on our model. So as a little challenge, think about this. When our model scale is one foot equals one quarter inch, how big are our building facades? Take a moment and pause the video if you like to think about this. So it just takes a little simple math to figure this out. So let's use our 20 foot height as an example. To convert our 20 foot height down into a one foot equals one quarter inch scale, all we have to do is multiply that real world scale by our model building scale. So that would be 20 multiplied by one quarter, which equals five. Another way to think about this is we could divide 20 by four, which also equals five. So our built model would actually be five inches tall and we can apply those same steps to all of our real-world dimensions. So when our model scale is one foot equals one quarter inch, our building is five inches tall, and our short side is six and a half inches, and our long side is eight and three quarters of an inch. I chose the scale one foot equals one quarter inch because I wanted to make my building facade fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that I could print out you can use these same steps and make a model of any building you like. If you'd like to follow along with me though, I've included a PDF download in the description below of the building faces scaled down to one foot equals one quarter inch. Remember parents, when you print those out at home, make sure that your scale on your printer interface is set to 100% or actual size to make sure that these pieces are printed out at the right size. So we just covered our first two steps of the model building process. We got our building information with the photographs that we took and we made our fabrication plans by scaling down those photographs to the right size. Now with our plans, we can move on to the final step, assembly. To assemble our model, we're gonna follow these three basic steps. We're going to glue those printouts to some foam core. We're then going to cut out the printout and the foam core to make our walls. And then finally, we're going to glue those walls together. For the assembly step, you're going to need a few tools and materials to get started. If you'd like, you can pause the video here and gather your stuff. We're going to need an X-Acto knife to cut out our walls. And we're definitely going to want a cutting mat to put beneath our project to make sure that we don't cut on our table. A piece of cardboard would also work. 
We want a metal straight edge to make sure that we're cutting nice straight wall edges. And we want some hot glue to glue our walls together and some glue sticks to glue our images onto our foam core. And for our materials, we're going to want, of course, the printout of our building facades. And we're going to want 3 16 inch thick paper foam core and you're probably going to want that in about a 20 inch by 30 inch sheet or more. In our first step we're going to trim around those elevations you just printed out. We don't want to cut all the way to the edge we want to leave a little bit of that white edge. Once we do that, we can glue our paper printout to our foam core. I want to cover every inch on the back with glue, especially the edges. When you cover your back completely with glue, you can then lightly lay your printed glue side down onto your foam core. Then I'm going to lightly press my edges down and smooth out the sheets. And we're going to repeat that step for all of our four prints. With all of our prints glued to our foam core, we can now cut out our walls. At this point, you might need some adult supervision to help you with your cutting knife. We'll use the edge of our building as a straight line to cut along with our X-Acto knife or box cutter. To get a nice straight line, we'll use our metal straight edge. We'll position that straight edge right on top of the edge of our building. Now we can cut against that metal edge. Before you cut all the way through, make sure you have a cutting mat below your material so you won't cut up your table. Material like thick cardboard would also work. This is where you have to be pretty careful because you don't want to press too hard against your ruler in case your blade slips. This could cause an accident or injury, so be careful. If you're truly uncomfortable with using an X-Acto blade or you don't have an adult's help, you could use scissors to cut these walls. Your edges are just going to be a little messy. I find that dragging your blade with light downward pressure across your material is the best way to go. You can then run your blade across that same line a few times to make a full cut. Usually I don't want to cut all the way through my foam core on the first pass with my blade. This is just a safer method and creates a much cleaner edge. Now you have a few choices on the order you cut out your wall edges. I suggest cutting from the top edge of your wall first, then the sides, and leave the bottom for last. We want to make sure all of our walls are the same height. Remember, that's 5 inches tall. Once you have those three edges cut, measure from the top 5 inches and make a little tick mark with your blade on both sides. Line up your ruler with those tick marks and cut straight across from the bottom. Cutting the bottom edge of your wall last, make sure that all of the building faces are the same height. So let's go ahead and cut out the rest of those walls. Now we have our four walls and we can glue them together with hot glue. Before we do that though, let's talk a little bit about our material thickness. Remember our discussion about scale? We're using 3 16 inch thick foam core to construct our exterior building walls. And we're using 1 foot equals 1 quarter inch scale. So how thick would those walls be in real life? Pause the video here if you'd like and think about it. So. Our model material in real life would actually be 9 inches thick. And the easiest way I can think of assembling these walls is to use a butt joint. This is where you just butt up your two sheets of material together. But in doing this, we're actually adding 9 inches of thickness to each wall. And this makes our plan inaccurate. So we don't add any extra thickness to our planned dimensions. I suggest using a variation on a rabbit joint, which you can see here. 
To do this, we need to cut out a pocket in the wall that is the same thickness as our material. I'm going to use scrap material and line it up with the edge of one of my walls and make little tick marks at the top and bottom of my material. I'll then line up my straight edge with those marks and draw a line so you can see where I'm cutting. Okay, so I have my line and I'm going to very lightly drag my blade across that line. And the point here is not to cut all the way through. All I want to cut is just that top piece of paper and some of the foam. Once I have this scored line, I can go in carefully and peel away the material that I'd like to remove and leave the front facade face uncut. So now we have a little pocket or shelf that perfectly fits our adjoining exterior wall. And we're going to repeat that step for all of our four walls along one edge. Make sure you only cut out one pocket along one edge and not both. Here you can see all of the walls from the back laid out with their corresponding pockets for reference. Now we can apply some glue to the exterior joint edge and press our walls together. Hot glue like this dries very quickly, so we're going to want to move fast before it fully sets. With our walls assembled, all that's left to do is to make our roof. We're just going to make a flat roof and use our squared up building walls to make an outline on our leftover foam core material. I'm going to line up my building to the edge of my material from the inside corner of my wall. I am then going to mark an outline of my building using the interior wall line. Now I can cut out a sheet of material using that line that I just drew. Before gluing it together, I'll use some scrap material to make a little shelf for my roof to sit on. I'll measure about 3 quarters of an inch down on each interior wall side and glue a little piece of foam core along that edge. Now, when I ease my roof in, it's supported by these little shelves around the sides. The last thing I'll do here is glue my roof down from the underside. And there you have a final assembled building. In this photograph, you can see that I've added in some details like trees and a base to my project, but feel free to make your project your own with different details. You should be able to apply the steps that we learned here today on any building in your own neighborhood. I encourage you to explore your own community and try to make a model out of a different structure using the lessons learned here. I want to thank you for joining me on this virtual model building tutorial for kids. If you want to see more of our projects, check out our website at yourmodelspace.com and get inspired. And once again, parents, if you want to learn more advanced skills, check out my professional model building tutorials on LinkedIn Learning. I have a link in the description below. Thank you again and happy building!